We'll start off with something simple, this pushing motion. I got this stylized character from Reillusion in a pushing pose to start off with. How can we use the sine wave to make him move like he's actually pushing the wall? Basic concept number 6B, procedural animation workflow. Now I'm going to enable the render flag on the Eric character because the Eric character runs a little faster. Now this motion is powered by a sine wave. The sine wave is a very powerful and relatively easy expression to understand. You can create a variety of different animations depending on how you apply it to your character. Now the workflow I'm proposing is that get your character posed first using the techniques that we've learned throughout the basic concepts that um, I've taught throughout this mini series. Then add the sine wave onto the last layer step, which is the last layer step you see over here. That's where I add my sine wave to create the procedural animation. All these other layers are uh, for posing the character to get the character in a position that's ready to go. Now this is with the Eric character. The one I'm going to be working with is the Toon Goon that I got from Real Illusion. Or we can have them side by side. We can have both of them. It does run a little slower. This is the Toon Goon setup. You can see here I've collapsed a huge bunch of notes into this. You, you can see all the space that's down here that's missing all these notes. The reason for this space is that I've collapsed all the character pose setup. So let me expand it out. All this red blocks are the character posing. And that's the stuff that we've learned from the previous videos on how to pose our characters using Kinefax. Now let's take a look. The actual procedural animation is just the stuff in here. Now, let me just bypass all this. So let's just ignore this, move it aside. And I'm going to bypass all that. And just to show you what it's doing without the uh, procedural animation. All this stuff here is simply posing this Toon Goon character into this pose and to get him into this state. Then we're going to use the sine wave and we're going to add a bit of motion to push him forward and backwards. And thanks to the IK controls and the full body IK, all we had to do is manipulate two joints and let the full body IK do all the work for us. So I'm just going to bring that back in. We don't need the character posing part for this video. We're only going to focus on the procedural animation part. So that's why I'm going to collapse it so we don't see it. I, I am leaving. I'm going to leave all this space here just because it makes it much easier to uh, expand and collapse it. Okay, let's put this back in. Now let's just concentrate on the Toon Goon character. We can ignore this. And let's remove all this and start fresh. I'm going to delete all this and we're going to recreate the procedural animation part by sticking the sine wave in. So we have this character here in this pose and now we're going to animate him. What is the first thing we need? Think of the anchor points. I want the feet to be pinned down because I don't want the feet to move all over the place. If we start manipulating the IK controls, the feet are going to start floating in the air, not only slide on the ground, but it's going to float in the air as well. So let's pin down the feet. Throw down our, our usual blast node. Now I'm going to select the feet. I'm going to pick my lasso over here. I want to select the feet. I don't want this to move and I don't want this to move while the mouse is hovering over the 3D. People press enter and you're going to see that our bone points are, are going to be added over here. Let's drop down a full body IK. We've done this a lot of times already. Switch this over to match by attribute names and we can reuse the bone names and avoid bone remapping. I'm going to move this over and add another blast node. Now I need something to manipulate to add the sine wave. What bones can we add the sine wave to? What are the points we want to add to our IK controls? In order to figure that out, ask yourself these questions. What is it we want to move? Which bone do we want to move? What is the IK bone that when we move will make it look like he's pushing a wall? Well, let's try with the hip. I'm going to enable the name so we can actually see what we're doing. Okay, so this character has a lot of bones. Let's pick one. I'm going to pick something on the spine or the hip. So let's try with this hip down here. That's the spine that moves 
almost everything. If we have the feet pinned down and we're going to add a sine wave to this bone, so this IK bone, it should be able to push the character forward and backward like he's pushing the wall. So let's add a ring pose node. So everything goes into the full body IK. We have to merge our IK control and the anchor points. Now let's come over here and manipulate our IK. So this is the one bone that we added to the eye um, for the IK control. I want you to notice this axis. It's not aligned to the world axis. You, this is the local axis. So you can see that this Y axis over here is pointing sideways. It's not pointing straight up as what we normally have in Houdini. So this is you, that's something you have to be aware of. The local axis or the local transform of this bone that we have selected, this hip bone, is not aligned to the world axis. So when you're manipulating everything, um, putting the sine wave in here into the rig pose, you need to know what you're actually doing. For example, now we're going to move this y axis, move this uh, hip up the y axis, and you're going to see that this goes up here. You can see that it's going up like that. So it's not exactly going up and down. Now, and what if we wanted to move it forward though? Well, let's try this. This is the closest thing we have so far. This, this sort of gets us what we want, but there's actually another problem that's coming up. I want you to notice the arms. When I manipulate this hip, it's actually making the arms float around and it's not, his arms are no longer aligned with the wall. And let's see what it looked before. So I'm going to disable this. So it wasn't really aligned that well either. Guess we can fix that. So I'm just going to move the wall so he's a little closer and matches this. I know the hands aren't exactly aligned with the wall, but due to time constraints, this will have to do. The focus of this video is procedural animation is moving the hands everywhere, which is not going to be good. Like it's going to be really difficult to add a sine wave on this while keeping the hands on the wall. So what does that mean? What does that tell us? It means we need more anchor points. So let's clear this. Now let's add the hands onto the list of anchor points that we have. So I want this one and this one. Actually, let's add all the fingers as well, because we don't want that to move either. Enter it in, and let's try this again. Okay, this is much better. So he pushes it. This actually looks really not great. Like it doesn't look like he's pushing it because he push. He's using, he's using power from his hips and pushing onto the wall. Uh, it doesn't create a pushing motion. When you're trying to decide which IK controls to add the sine wave to. It requires a little bit of experimenting. So you have to pick a few bones, pick a few IKs, and then play around with it using the rig pose in order to figure out which one is your best option. Let's come over here and clear this. And let's actually go back to our IK. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna choose a different IK. So I don't want this hip anymore. Let's get rid of that and when you're actually pushing the wall, your elbows are going to move because like, you're trying to push something. So the elbows will move. So let's try adding the sine wave to the elbow IKs. So let's choose this one and this one. Let me actually turn up, uh, make these dots a little bigger. Guides, let's go seven. Okay, that's a lot better. Let's choose the elbows. Okay, press enter, and we have our elbows up here. Now, let's try this out now. Now, since we have two of these, it'd be a little tricky to manipulate, but let's give this a try, in which this rig comes with a lot of bones. The one that I want is the forearm, not the twist bone. I want the forearm, the elbow, that one. And let's come over here and the forearm elbow as well. Now let's try manipulating this. Again, we have this local axis. The closest one that we I can see that will help us will be this Y one. 
So we can see another problem. The fingers are moving, even though we had put in our anchor points. Now we did not put in priority. So that means we need priority. Once we put a sine wave on this, it's gonna go even cha more chaotic. So let's come back over to the full body IK. Now expand the configure, press this little button here and let's add the fingers to the full body IK priority. In order to see your bone in the viewport, put the render flag on the full body IK. Otherwise you won't see the bone structure even after you press this little arrow button here. You won't be able to see it. So you have to put the render flag on the full body IK here. Now that, then it comes up. So let me just click this again. Let's choose the hand. So all of the hand, so I'm just gonna, all of this, and then all of this. I'm not sure why it's not highlighting in yellow usually it will there are times that it doesn't i'm not sure why but it is indeed selected and i'm going to choose my feet as well so i don't want the feet to move either so i'm going to pin that down with priority enter and you can see that it, it's all in here so it did work out it's all there even though it didn't highlight in yellow for some strange reason now let's go back to this and try out that ik again uh, I'll put the render flag on here so we can see the wall. Okay, let's try manipulating this. I think the Y is pretty good. Oh, I forgot to actually put a value for the IK, uh, for the priority. There's the full body here. And you can see that there's no, it has a priority value of zero. So I forgot to put a value in here. So let's give it one. Here, let's give it two just in case because it one should be the largest one, but I'm just going to put it to two because it doesn't hurt. Now, let's go back to that IK again and let's do this one more time. Uh, let's do this. Okay, so it's not moving. It's finally, so we finally got something that's not moving. I think we can put the sine wave on the Y axis of this, of both elbows. I think that should give us the animation that we want, the pushing animation. Because if you look at this, he is kind of pushing it. Because I'm only manipulating, testing one arm, one elbow right now, it's hard to tell. But it looks okay on this side. So let's give it a whirl. Let's give it a try. Now let's come over here and I'm going to zero this out. Now I'm going to, in the Y, that's what we said. We're going to put the sine wave. So I'm going to put a sine uh, wave expression. Powered, what's the sine wave going to be driven by? It's going to be driven by the timeline. So the input values will be the timeline. So dollar sign F, that's the timeline. As long as the timeline is moving forward, so is the sine wave. Okay, let's try that out. Yeah, that's moving very, very slowly. And it's very, the, the movement is, is really, it's just really, really slow. So how do you make the sine wave faster? Well, if the timeline moves faster, the sine wave will move faster. What we can do is come over here and multiply the frame by a number to make it faster, twice as fast times two. I wanna actually move this four times as fast, four times as fast, and let's play this. Okay, that's a lot better. But we're only getting one arm, so it's really hard to tell if this is actually working. So what we're going to do is that same trick I had taught, I had demonstrated in a previous um, KinFX video, is that I'm going to take the transform of the left elbow, and I'm just going to copy this parameter, the entire translate, and I'm just going to go to the right elbow, and I'm just going to paste it in. Paste relative references. So if the left elbow moves, the right elbow will move with it. And just play in, let's see what how this looks like. Now it does seem a little strong because once this goes all the way here, it starts to, uh, the hip starts changing position, which is not something we want. So this is a little, coming out a little strong. In order to lower this whole effect, remember the sine wave is always giving us one to negative one. If that's too much for us, what are we gonna do? Well, we can always multiply a number. Say, if I always want half of that number, just multiply 0.5. That will always make something half of it. So then this sign will, will return negative 0.5 to 
0 0.5. So let's just multiply 0.5. Let's see how this goes. Okay, it is a little slow for me, so I'm going to speed this up a bit more. So instead of times 4, I'm going to times 8. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I mean, it does, the hip has a bit of artifact going when it's pushing forward. Right here. So I'm going to stopping it right here. But it's not too bad. Now let's see what we can do to fix this manually. So we then we can apply the sine wave and then we can make it procedural. It's much easier to know what you're doing before you blindly add the sine wave because the sine wave will complicate things even further. You have to know exactly what you're doing first. What's the first thing we can try? Well, let's try tweaking some of the other local axes of this left elbow bone. We already fed in a sine wave into the y axis. So let's try tweaking the x axis to see what we get. Move it down. If that helps, no, that doesn't fix this artifact down here. Let's see if we try and move it this way. Okay, that seemed pretty good. So if we add another value to the y axis, probably not, not that extreme, maybe just a bit get rid of this artifact. The sine wave needs another parameter to manipulate the z axis, which is this blue arrow we have over here. So let's give that a try. Now let's come over here and let's let's come back over here and let's go over here. Let's actually add a sine wave to the z axis. So I'm just going to zero this out. And let's come over here. Let's sine and let's just do the same thing what we did before. Let's start with something simple and play it. Now it is acting a little weird at this point, so I'm going to stop the timeline and let's take a look at what the value is for the z-axis. So it's 0.69. Now this makes it look weird. Your hands will not do this when you're pushing a wall. I'm suspecting that it's probably a negative we need to put a negative value because if we come back over here, positive goes down and it's moving the elbow too close to the head, causing the elbows to scrunch up in this area over here. So what do we do then? Well, let's first of all, let's let's dim down the Z axis. It seems like it's going too far. So let's half do that half trick again. Let's multiply half to the entire sine wave so we can get a lower dim down the effect. Okay, it seems like it's improving, but I still think the z-axis is too strong. So instead of, let's go even further, third. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, our the artifact st still exists, but it's not as bad. And it does look like, like when you're pushing a wall, your the hips do sort of move. So this is not too bad. The key thing I want you to take away from this video is the workflow of creating a simple loop animation using some clever sine waves added to selective IK controls. Put this into two separate steps. Pose the character first, that's all this stuff, and then add your procedural animation at the end to the IK controls. Deciding which IK controls may require some trial and error, but that's the fun part too. Experimenting with your character to see what happens when you add the sine wave to the left elbow, right leg, or even the hips is a lot of fun. You may find a lot of happy accidents to spark your new ideas for your project. And don't limit yourself with just the sine wave. If you have any other expressions, you can try it out on your character to see what happens. And since everything is so procedural, you can easily take out the step 2 procedural animation part and plug in other expressions to keep experimenting. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.